There is truly no question that Jesus the Son is presented to us in the Christian scriptures as God Almighty incarnate. He's explicitly called in scripture the Prince of Life seating at the right hand of the Majesty on high, the Saviour and Light of the world, the King of Israel, the Good, Great and Chief Shepherd, the Lord of the Sabbath, the express image of God's person from heaven, the winds and sea obeying him, the giver of eternal life, the Lord of glory, God with us, existing in the form of God, knowing all things, the radiance of God's glory, worshipped by all the angels of God, in him was life and all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, the word who was God being there in the beginning with God, worshipped by every created thing, equal with God, in him all things consist, the one Lord, the one Lord of Christians, the church, the world was made through him, and the world did not know him, all things have been created by him and for him, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess him as Lord, being before all things, having the, the name above every name, upholding all things by the word of his power, through whom God made the worlds, the Lord who laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens of the works of his hands, one with the Father, having glory with the Father before the world was, the mighty God, everlasting Father, our great God and Saviour, the I Am before Abraham was even born, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. These are simple, clear titles and descriptions given to Jesus in the Old and New Testaments. Now think about it. If this language is not good enough to prove that Jesus is equal with God, that Jesus is the Lord and God of the Old Testament, that Jesus is Jehovah, then what would be good enough? What would, what, what would even be sufficient? What language is good enough to prove that the Trinity is right? Does the Bible have to have an explicit Trinitarian creed like Jesus is God Almighty of one substance and nature with the Father, co-equal and co-eternal, true God from true God? Does it really need something that explicit? Or does it simply need language and descriptions of Jesus just like this? directly from the Bible. These are not creedal statements. These are not, this is not Trinitarian language. This is biblical language to describe the person of Christ. Why isn't this language good enough? What language would be good enough to prove to you as a non-Trinitarian that Jesus, the Son, as the Son, is equal with God and is in fact his, his essential and true identity is Yahweh or Jehovah. We have to remember that the New Testament was written decades after the church had already established who Jesus really was. The church already affirmed the Trinity and the deity of their Messiah. These Jews and Gentile Christians who, uh, who accepted Christ, at, uh, Jesus as their Messiah already believed that he was deity in human form like we see in Colossians 2.9 in this verse quoted on the screen. He is the first and the last, as Isaiah 44.6 says of Jehovah, he's the first and the last, the only God, he's the first and the last God, in other words. This, this language, this, this belief that Jesus was the Messiah and God in human form, God among us, God with us, the King of Israel, as Nathaniel calls uh, Jesus in uh, in John chapter 1, and, and, and Isaiah also refers to Jehovah as the King of Israel, Jehovah titles over and over and over again. Why would this surprise us when the New Testament was completed decades after the church had already affirmed the deity of their Messiah and the complex unity or multiplicity of the one true God? The, one, the, the divine plurality of the one true God was already affirmed and established when the when the new testament was completed and written in fact as i've argued in recent videos divine plurality the multiplicity of god the multiplicity or plurality within his unity or oneness one being in uh, in a tripersonal or pluritarian way uh, was believed and affirmed by orthodox judaism uh, 
before and around the time of Jesus. It seemed to be a prevalent view among Jews who were certainly not Unitarians back in those times. They became Unitarians as they started to reject Jesus, to reject Christianity, to reject uh, the Trinity. They, they hated the Trinity, therefore they started becoming Unitarians, these Jewish rejectors of Christ. The Jewish acceptors of Christ would gladly affirm that Jesus, uh, they would gladly affirm a, a pluritarian view of God and the Trinity, of course, since they accepted Jesus as their Messiah and as their God, because the Old and New Testament supported that Jesus was in fact God. They had to go with what Scripture clearly teaches. We have to look at the full revelation. How can you explain all these titles and descriptions of Jesus in light of a Unitarian view or an Iglesia de Cristo view, or even a Mormon and Jehovah's Witness view, who still regard the Son of God as a creation of God, a, a creation before the world was made. How can you explain this? What language is good enough? What language is sufficient enough if this language is not? You see, in light of this language, it's clear that it's not an issue of biblical theology or biblical evidence. It's an issue of the heart. It's an issue of pride. Satan is blinding your hearts and minds away from affirming who Jesus really is. It takes great humility to deny your false beliefs about Christ and embrace the biblical view, the historic Christian view of who Jesus really is. You, you, have, to, you have to throw out your pride and just go with what the scriptures teach instead of fighting against what scripture teaches. How how can you look at this? These these Jehovah titles applied to Jesus. These these simple descriptions given to Jesus, and say no. Jesus is the the greatest creation of God. Jesus is a virgin-born human being, son of God, but not really son of God by nature, and equal with God as John five eighteen uh, defines what son of God really means. So since the divine plurality of the one true God and the deity of the Messiah was already accepted and established in the church decades before the, the, the New Testament was completed, it's no surprise that they just assume the multiplicity of the one true God. They assume the deity of Christ with all these, these, these descriptions and passing, these quotations and references from the Old Testament about the Lord God Almighty applied to Jesus over and over again in the New Testament. This, it's, just, uh, it's just an assumption of the church that, to already believe in the deity of Christ. That's why we don't find them trying really, really hard to prove the Trinity and the deity of Christ. It's already assumed and established doctrine within the Christian church. So you see, the, the apostles who wrote the New Testament may have not used the exact same language from uh, the Trinitarian creeds like Nicene and Chalcedonian Trinitarianism that came much later, but they would have certainly agreed with the essence of what those creeds taught. I prefer to simply stick with the biblical language. I don't depend on the Trinitarian creeds that that came about in the 300s, the 400s, the 500s, etc. I simply go to the scriptures and give you what the Bible says about who Jesus is, and it's up to you and your convictions, your conscience, and your truth-seeking to accept it or not, to go with the scriptures or not. It is your responsibility to embrace who Jesus is in light of this. And looking at these biblical descriptions, you have a, a huge burden and responsibility to accept these simple biblical descriptions of who Jesus is, to repent and believe, to humble yourself and to, to surrender to King Jesus, who is the first and the last God. And it is my prayer that you do so.